You know, though I complain about border Morris and the fact that the, you know, the, the, the bottom layer of, of border in this country is awful, but gay good sides are incredibly good for the same reason. They thought out what they're doing and why they're doing it, you know, and everything they do has an impact. Um, I think the thing is, with the very simple forms of Morris, it's one of the advantages that Cotswold has. In that you've actually got to, you've actually got to have thought and worked reasonably hard to be competent enough to glance out. But with the very simple forms, and I include Northwest in that, but Northwest border Molly, yeah. there isn't anything except the performance. The dances aren't were actually worth watching. Right. So you've got to make something more of it. And the Molly dances. Yeah, well, as those of us who were at the workshop last week found out, the body dances are like really tedious. <laughs> but you can make something, and champions have made something really yes. rather special. Well, you, you, you say that. The... I've been on playing Monday tours, you know, in East Anglia with, with people over the years, and it being a working day, the, the audiences are small, and so on. But they've done where they've done it for several years. The audience expected them. I think that's just fine. The dancers are incredibly simple. So what? The audience doesn't care, mm -hmm. on the whole, you know, as long as they, they're dressed up and do something mm -hmm. rather, that's good enough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Who in the audience cares about the quality of the dance? Well, that, oh, I think they do with the clock, you know, they expect mm -hmm. it to be noisy and vigorous and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'd say, I, you know, I dance different sorts of Morris all year, and I'd say that the best occasion I have in the year is when I dance Molly, and we practice for about an hour and three quarters of the year. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, when we were at Straw Bear this yeah. year, I mean, Yaxley were out in their, uh, their black and white. I mean, to be honest, the dancing was fairly naff. Well, of course the dancing <laughs> was naff. Yes, but I was, was. I was amongst the audience, and I heard people say, oh, look at the black and white side, they're really good. And they were good. The dancing was awful. The rapport with the audience was brilliant. Yeah. Mm. It really I, was. I feel the um, seven champs produce something that uh, feels a lot more like border without the sticks. Uh, although it's Molly, and it, I mean, I think it's superb dancing, and I love their persona, and I thoroughly enjoy it. There's a wonderful magic. But in a way, I, I feel Molly is, is more about, um, and, and this is open to an awful lot of uh, conjecture, but uh, couple dancing uh, and cross-dressing uh, and a bit of muddling through and the sort of dancing <laughs> that you could manage to do by rehearsing it one time a year. Mm. The Seven Champs, in a way, is a professional, lovely version of non-handkerchief yes. border. And one I'm of the not <laughs> sure it's, it's quite what I feel the origins of Molly were. One of the problems with the Seven Champs is they've actually created so many people who copy them and do it badly. No, Seven Champs no, bears the same well. relationship to Molly dancing as modern ballet does to 18th century yeah. folk dancing from which it derived. Or, or it's, it is performance art yeah. for a large audience. Yeah. It is not yeah. particularly in, geared towards... They are festival the sizes. Dances. They are. They're festival right. They're not actually geared to going out on the road no. and dancing around their village, no. as it were. No. They do it, and it's rather fun, but they're not geared up to it. No. Most of what they do is lost. About three years ago at Straw Bear Day, there was, um, it was a youth club from somewhere in the fence. Was it? Maple. 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 They've been dancing for 15, 20 years. Yeah, but they're, they're lots of children, yeah. two or three adults, they had grooms with them, they were dressed in you know, ragtag and bobtail, totally uncoordinated, they had terrific life, yeah. and they were really good to watch ever such simple dances. They came on, they were different, they were having a great deal of fun, and they communicated it with the audience. And that's the sort of thing that I feel the Morris is. It's people who are doing something they want to do. If you don't get all to all the practices that the Seven Champs think you want to get to, then you become an ex-champ. You know, that, it's not quite the style of thing that I want to be in. Um, they both have magic though. They both have magic, yeah. That's right, yeah. Right. Right. You talked about children. To actually you know, evaluate this. In Portsmouth, there's a team, a children's cycle, Fleur de Lis, who, over the years, have found themselves having to admit children from the age of four upwards, you know, four to twelve. And when they dance out, the junior side, the four to six year olds, 
who I reckon can contain anybody who can dance. Now, I mean, I videoed this year's dances, and from the video, you can't actually tell what the dance is. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean you can't tell it's so and so from somewhere or other. You look at it and say, how many steps are there to a figure? And what is the figure? <laughs> but they totally absorb the audience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Children and animals <laughs> yeah, really are totally absorbing. A lot of people turn up for them, they actually run a Morris Orange. Because they can't drink, there's a big urn of orange juice available. And they invite all the side bars in, and they all come. It's fantastic. And all the mums and dads come. It's absolutely fantastic. That's all I can say to you. Similar victory, actually, where their Morris orange tickets with great pride in their hands. Yeah, really, really. slightly annoyed, I was too far. But, yeah. They can't dance, so they don't really understand what they're doing. And they tend to have, have their teacher, as it were, the trainer, doing semaphore the set <laughs> to indicate what the wife thinks. But the rapport with the audience and the sense of attention and concern is well, terrific. Because they're young and we have an attitude towards young people. You know, at the Portsmouth Art Festival, in the folk dance section, one of the classes for, is for kindergarten, you know, play school groups. Now when a team of four-year-olds come on and actually dress in French costume and sing some French folk songs, well, you know, games really, you know, it's absolutely incredible. It's like dogs walking on a hind leg, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's impossible to do, isn't it? And if you're adjudicating, you really have to say, you know, well, I have to give them honours, you know, it's incredible they turned up at all. <laughs> You know, children, the performance, you know, the kind of, you suspend your, your critical judgment with children, you just think it's fantastic they do anything at all. I mean, most people do anyhow. You don't suspend it, you actually have an entirely different set of criteria. Oh, probably, which yeah. you should have for children. Yeah. But should you have been in a competition with adults? Um, no. That's one of the problems with super competition, was the uh, FOSB accepted. Yeah. And I believe you described them as the who are team, the are team. Yeah. Um, well, I actually think they'll stand up to most, <laughs> most of the local teams anyway, but um, you know, there is a problem with is that you tend to turn off <laughs> and you tend to allow them to get away with things that you wouldn't allow an adult team to. That's right. And in a competition, is that fair? It's Sidmouth, it wasn't fair. I mean, we, we clobbered, Sidmouth, I can remember the years in which the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were <laughs> I'm trying to think of the na name of the, the, you know, the kid's side from up the northwest side that turned up with... Uh, Scores and scores, they're Fosbrook. Fosbrook, Fosbrook. 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 That's right, yeah. Fosbrook. 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 I, mean, I have to say, you know, the dancer was superb, but a band of 40, you know, <laughs> straight on say, were awful. You know, and it was just awful. And you went to enter a senior competition where it's supposed to be the premier folk dance competition in the country, as it were. You have to judge them by the standard of the competition and say, some things were awful and we can't make compensation, you can't say because you're kids, you know, you get a bonus mm. and things like that. They just say no, some things are very good, they dance very well, but the things that let them down. Yes, it's like the year Iffy Morris ends up, we aim to come last and we didn't. I mean, you know. <laughs> already like in boxing they have a weight scale so you just have some Morris dancers for sort of 10 stone below <laughs> 10 stone yes, and then three stone three <laughs> stone we're not as heavy as half truck <laughs> no I think it should be total team weight myself total team weight yes, yes. Yeah. over 118 stone and over <laughs> Get to the victory. Absolutely, try it for 19 and three quarter hundred weight. Uh, uh, Would you expect They're to see not actually just, just look at the Are we sure? Yeah. No? It's the costume. Would you expect a similar sort of uh, yeah. different criteria for different weight? Yeah. 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 Let me wind this out a bit, you know, with a sort of a view, because there's 
It's obviously some, something that occurs to me, which I, I won't say sums it up, but you know, an attitude of mind. I have a, a friend, a colleague at work, you know, whose attitude is he's trying to solve the secrets of the universe by the optimum guidance equations for um, air, grain to air missiles. Uh, what he means is that. What he means is just that. <laughs> It's the same way, is it? You know, I'm, I'm interested in the secrets of the universe, but via the Morris dance. Because to grasp, as it were, the Morris dance, I haven't understood it at all, you actually have to know not just a few dancers and a little bit of it performance, you actually need to know a great, great deal about history, about people, about why the world's the way it is today, what the world's going you know, headlong into disaster and things like that. You actually need to do something with everything. But from the perspective of being interested in the Morris. You know, and anybody who's an enthusiast for a particular topic and interest and so on is like that. You know, they just see that they're interested in the whole world but from the particular point of view that they have. Now I see the Morris as part of the Live entertainment part of it. You know, it's the fun part which we do. Entertainment is to give you the lift in life, you know, not to be the part of the drudgery of things like this. Show. And you do it because you get something out of it, and you do it for people because they get something out of it. But, uh, the fact that when one looks at traditional cultures, I mentioned the Romanians, but I could have mentioned the Aborigines in Australia, the Indians in America, and so on, any of these cultures, the things they do are for the community. Um, at the Smithsonian in Washington, at this moment, if any of you ever get there in the next month or two, there's a very fine exhibition of what they call U.S. Southwest. It's basically Arizona, the Albuquerque strip north where the Pueblos um, for Indians and Hispanic people are. And this is about their culture, their problem of dealing with Americans. Because they don't see themselves as American, they see themselves as Hispanic or as Indian, you know, Aboriginal, as it were. And they've got their culture. And at Christmas, they do the Morris. And there's a lovely video of the Pueblo Indians doing the Matishan and the Hispanic people doing the Matishan. It's in principle the same dance, but it isn't quite the same. The Pueblo Indians do it like they're Indians, and the yeah. Spanish do it like they're Spaniards. Of course, right? And when you pull out the Indian bit and the Spanish bit, is it there, and they sure may do things, then you can actually see an underlying Morris, which actually looks like the English Morris taking out the English bit. Mm. Yes, because if you, where, if you think you know, about I mean, some of the early films you see of the 1920s, they are Englishmen dancing an English dance. So we, we all yes. have the figure of the, 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 the classic English figure uh, the, the man, as it was then, in the 1920s in particular, and he's dancing an English dance. I mean, it's quintessentially English, isn't it? So, yeah. so what do you get then if you pull the, the Englishness out of the Morris? You said earlier that there was no real commonality between us and the European stuff. So, yeah. so, so how come, you know, where, where does that leave us if we pull the Englishness out oh, of the Oh, it depends, depends. If you're a dancer, <coughs> like we are this weekend, you know, doing individual dances, you will find very little of what we do this weekend in the Basque or Provence or Northern Italy or anywhere, you know. But there's a basicness underneath it, you know, which in fact looks like it. I mean, these Pueblo Indians do one, two, three hop. Yeah. You know, and that's fundamental. And they have a, a funny implement in their hand which actually looks like a handkerchief, but it isn't. It's a fan sort of thing, you know. The, the fine details different. And when you see the dance, I, went, I arranged it because I know Harold Bass. I arranged to see the original collect, you know, the original videoing from which the display was done. And you see that what they have is a 20 minute show. You know, they have five figures you know, to last 20 minutes. So guess how long each figure lasts? You know, that's right, it goes on and on and on. If you're aware of um, rapper, Around Erston, Newcastle area, the rapper is very complex. But the further you get away from the origin of it, the simpler it gets. Right? Arizona is a long way away from Spain. 
<laughs> Whatever the Spanish Morris was, it's got rather simple. You know, oh, there, there are five different steps, but they're all versions of the same thing. Five different figures, but they're all versions of the same sort of thing and so on. But they've compensated by doing something else with it. They've elaborated, they've elaborated the part of the girl that goes with the fact that they've got five little girls, <coughs> all which take part, and things of this sort. And that's what I mean by the Morris show. You can actually, I can see, I can see, because I've seen a lot of European Morris, I can see threads that run through. Do you, do you? But if I teach you a dance, like we did a bass dance tonight, that's not like any English dance. No. Right? No, no, and no, last no, time no, we like talked. It's not like a bass dance. Hmm? It's not like a bass dance. No, no, yeah. Well, I haven't talked about <laughs> bass dances, have I? You know. Yes, but it's not a similar. Can, just one, one quick rat hole. Do the, uh, the Pueblo Indians think of this as a living tradition? In that you say they've only got five simple figures, they're all variants on the same thing. You know, what happened to the last guy who said, why don't we do it this way? I mean, no, was he hung, drawn, and quartered? <laughs> or, or did they say, hey, that's a really neat idea. Each we'll Pueblo's do dance is slightly different. But, you know, and the fact that they actually, they don't even practice, they just get up and do it do that it. day. Okay. You know, what that's did we do last year? You know, and if you introduce a change, well, a change comes into it. And um, the Howard, um, his films from previous times show the fact that dance does drift mm -hmm. over the years. They don't care about that. The important bit is the occasion. The whole yeah. Pueblo comes together for it. Yeah. You know, that particular thing, and they're celebrating a particular aspect of the culture on that day. I mean, they have celebrations all through the year, rather like we would have saint days. You know, and the saints are noted for one aspect or other of their culture, and therefore that's what they emphasize that day. Let's go back to one of your earlier statements. You said the tradition is now implying that it, it didn't have any significance what happened in the past. The fact that these people are dancing, well, you can rather imply that. Mm, I don't really mean that. Yeah. Because that's a very dangerous statement, you know, very dangerous way of interpreting what I say. The fact that the same dance is done by two racially different groups and has different qualities yeah. um, it is evidence that past of both of the racial groups greatly influences the way they think and yeah. the way they move. You know, we are where we are at any position on the map because of where we've been previously. And we are in time and in history because of what's gone before. And you can't understand the, future, the Morris without actually understanding your history. And um, <coughs> what happens in the future depends not on only on what's happened in the past but what we do now. It's an amalgam of the two. And um, we have we have a responsibility for the future. But we, you, you we say have that. To be aware of the past. You say that, but how many of us here know where our pasts were? I've got a pretty good idea. I've been mm. born in North London. Most yeah, of us, there was past. no Morris. Yes. There was no Morris dancing there at all. But most of us don't need to know that. No. You see, it it's only when it's only, only when one's view of the past yeah. deviates so strongly from history that in fact we start making wrong decisions about what we should do, that you've got to fuss about it. You don't that, need a deeply introspective view of the past, but you have to be aware of your own history. As you perceive it. Ah, well, whether you're nobody the winning, else can perceive yeah, it. Yeah, but whether you're the winning or the losing side. Yeah. I mean, mm. it's, it's your viewpoint. I mean, how many here know where, where their pasts are? Well, I've mean, had to How many know whether they're winning or losing? Well, that again, that's, that's an irrelevant that's point. The, 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 you, you, are, you are what you are because of your experience. Yeah, but you, you That's said, not history, though. You That's your experience. You said, you my said, experience is my history. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. There's a big difference between that. I, 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 an example that always comes back to me is I, I used to be on the parochial church council of the Church of England parish up, in, up near Wigan. And there were a lot of people in that group who had very fixed attitudes about what was St. Luke's Oral. They didn't care about the Church of England, they didn't care about Christianity to a large extent, but what mattered was St. Luke's Oral to them. And if you ask them why, why you know, if you ask them about the other things, they, they would expand and that they would, they did have feelings, but what really mattered was St. Luke's Oral. And if you ask them about it, what came out was actually a set of prejudices that have been built up over 60 to 100 years. What their parents had taught them 
That's not their experience, but it was their parents' experience no, 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 that they've no. been handed down to. What it's their not actually taught them with yeah. their experience. But it wasn't the actually behind it was something entirely it's not, different. No, it's not actually their history. Because I mean, no, the, the classic there. point was that most of them, for instance, we, we used to have big arguments about the music in church, which is a standard thing to have arguments about these days in churches. And they said, oh, you've got to have the traditional music of the Church of England. And they were talking about the sort of thing you find in hymns ancient and modern. So they didn't like strum among the gods? No, no. They, yeah. they, they, okay, well, fair enough. But I mean, they, they, they believed, I, mean, I reckon that some of them felt that at the Last Supper they sang hymn 147 hymns ancient and modern. <laughs> and that was the sort of attitude you got. And in fact, hymns ancient and modern was published exactly two living memories ago. It was published in about 1860. Mm. And if you take the old organist at that church at that time, if when he joined the choir there had been an old organist playing the organ, that old organist would have remembered the publication of that book. You are talking about a very limited period of time, and what people perceive as their history is not actually what happened. It's very limited, and it's yeah. very narrow. But that's why I, I distinguish between the, the concept of a past, which is what you think you know, and what influences your decisions and your attitudes, and the history, which is the actual facts. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I'm the friend of the Morris Federation, and not a member of the Morris Ring, is that I did object to the way people were distorting history to actually promulgate a point of view which wasn't to me acceptable. Mm. You know? And I think it's terribly important to actually realise that attitudes are culturally derived. Your history, you know, your experience with yeah. it, is actually imposed on you by the people around you. Mm. Unless you look at it rationally and say, well, why did these attitudes occur? Mm. You know, why were women put in the position <coughs> they were in the 19th century and so on? And why is it like it is today? You don't actually understand things. That's why an article in December's Hampshire magazine about Winston Morris, you know, got up my nose because, in fact, it talked about the fact that the Morris was traditionally for women. So, women, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> they were part of it. You know, it's they didn't it because... When I look at Mike Heaney and Forrest, you know, early Morris annuals, I reference, of the many of the 800 references which actually mention the sex of the performer, Half of them say the side was mixed. Mm. You know, the women weren't excluded then because culture wasn't like that then. Mm. Women were excluded in the 19th century partly because the men didn't want them, the women didn't want to be involved. It was the way the 19th century it's was. Like, and like I don't care in that respect about the 19th century. You know, it's yeah. dead and gone. It killed my grandparents and so on. You know, so on. What I'm concerned with is what we are now. The tradition is no, and our attitudes are no, and what's acceptable, no. We're not, because it's the Morris, we're not fighting social problems. We're, we're not making the mistake of Mary Neal and Cecil Sharp of actually trying to imagine that the Morris dancer is a way to a greater society. You know, it's not like that. Right? We're actually talking about, within the attitudes which society's got at the moment, what's acceptable, what, in other words, will people tolerate right, on the street? What will we tolerate within our clubs and organisations? Because that's what matters. You know, I, I don't think of any Morris club I know which sits down and debates the world news and the world philosophy, and you know, and really was Einstein right? You know, yeah, and things of that sort. It's all about what are we going to do next Saturday and how should we dress and things of that sort. Right? Oh, he's going to play for a lot about how. <laughs> You said to, that to fully understand the Morris, you had to sort of understand its history. But, but what if the magic that makes us dance, which we cannot actually define, is, is similar to the magic that made people dance throughout the history? The actual magic of the Morris I think might it's be the same magic. Could possibly yeah. be understood without people haven't changed. The history. No. I mean, when I say people haven't changed, uh, when I came to live in the fleet in the 1950s, uh, we met an old lady who told us about a family retainer who'd been in the army of William IV. You know, he'd actually been on duty at Winchester Assizes when they were 
uh, trying the people who were in the, the Salborn uh, riots, you know, which um, four were condemned to be hung and actually transported for life, you know, that sort of thing, you know. You suddenly realise, God, that Spinham land scheme, you know, poor all. Mm. I'm two people removed yeah. from ancient history. You know, people haven't changed very much. Yeah, well, the yeah. registry doesn't actually change that fast. This is why I say that my experience is my history. My mother was one of 18 children. Her, her mother had 18 children, 12 of whom lived to adulthood, 6 died in childhood. She had 3 children. Her attitude to life, her experience was different. What she transmitted to us in terms of a, um, a philosophy of life, she would never have spoken in those terms. What she the way to behave, the way to be a decent person, was quite different from the way that her mother behaved. Of and, course. What, and what my children get from me will be quite different from How what I got from them. Yeah. How was it different? How was it different? Well, it's a different experience. It's a different experience. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was due to different expectations, yeah. due to... Um, an example, my father was probably a more intelligent man than I am. He had to leave school at the age of 14. He had to spend 21 years as a seaman. He never realised anything like his ability to use his brain. He always did routine jobs. But, that, but that, that's in your opinion. <laughs> no, that was in his opinion. Okay, so he didn't But he gave me the opportunity to explore things that he never could have done. And I consider that so valuable. I've got to give it to my children. And if it means selling my house to give my children the opportunity that he gave me, I'd do that. Now, that's an entirely different concept. My grandparents always lived in rented rooms. They never actually lived in a rented house. They never had more than two rooms to live in. Now, the, the experience that they give their children is totally different. That's right. my history. Yeah. And bugger who, what was going on but in how, Westminster. But, but how has that history affected you, though? How is it affecting me? Yes. I mean, the <laughs> It, it, makes me, it makes me immensely discontent with people who don't have uh, the opportunity to develop what I consider is a reasonable right. standard of human functioning. I'm, I'm glad you said that because, in my opinion, the greatest thing that happened for Morris was actually 1944 Education Act. So that people like myself, you know, my generation, yeah. actually had a grammar school and university education who never would have had it. Yes. So that people from within the culture have the minds trained to think about their, their origins and what it was all about. Yeah. And that's why I say, you know, people like myself, and you know, I am, I can't say I am proud of my ancestors, or I'm not disapproving of them. You're just there, you know, my they? parents and grandparents are who they were. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just glad I knew these people. It yeah, could have been anybody. Really, I, I feel that my parents were victims of unfair society, <coughs> and I would like to make it a fairer, better place. Well, yes, but what's that to do with Morris dancing? Yeah, what's that to do with Morris dancing? Right. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> ought to be exposed to Morris dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a GP, right? I've got a GP who's a Scotsman. So he's, he's said, if I hear Morris music at a pub, I turn around and go away. <laughs> And I said to him, Murray's dancing is English culture, and as a Scotsman, those are two words that you will never understand. <laughs> yes, I think you're right on that, yes. Yes, they are. I suggest you turn to your next um, Dr. Your John Tim was right about the Scots. <laughs> because in a very small confined space, they're absolutely wonderful as a weapon. <laughs>
historians who would say, oh yes, Morris was always the young men's activity, and look at their age now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it? Look at our age, actually. We're still, <laughs> still a good 20 years younger than the average spring. We've well, last well, longer in our day. But, but, but it's quite a convenient um, excuse to say, well, of course, Morris also with fertility is a pagan activity before the Christian era, and they haven't a clue what they're talking about, but they'll maintain this and come up with a spurious reason for justifying why women should have been involved. So it meant that they could go away yeah. for weekends and get pissed and all the rest of things that people do anyway these days where they're now women, um, and could provide some sort of pseudo-historical justification for it. And so they maintain that, and have kept saying it, and, and you say it often enough, and you believe it, whether it's right or wrong. Because they felt but embarrassed it, it, about it, doing it themselves? What happened to the team that was sitting here? It's a B team I think I think the problem is men men have a problem with male bonding. Absolutely. Women don't have a problem with male bonding. That's absolutely true. I think that's absolutely true. I think that actually this whole stuff about pagan stuff in the men's mores is actually to, is to help them cope with the fact that they go away as men together and enjoy it and, in, and have a good time. Yeah, I, I'm quite convinced of that. I mean, I spent a long time in a room. Absolutely period, nothing, but they don't want they to admit it. They can't admit it. They can't acknowledge well, it. Well, in the States, they don't want to ten years ago in the States, the problem was that most of the morals were fixed. And they couldn't conceive that the men could actually go off and have an ale and enjoy themselves as men. It all had to be mixed. Because there weren't men in the yeah, but unfortunately, we're the heirs of our heirs, right? Of our culture. And our culture includes the fact that men's things. Do you perceive your culture as you perceive it? Look. What? I have I I inherited a an attitude, a number of attitudes to have men's things and it's women's but things. Didn't that the point and also that's how you uh, shh, that's how you ladies, stop it. <laughs> No, I don't stop her at the team, though, she's too valuable. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, there are men's things and women's things from the past, and there's the present, which isn't quite the same way. And why I say I have this wider interest, I want to actually, I want to understand for myself <coughs> what are my attitudes and things I've been brought up to believe and things like this are really true, which are basic, is it there? And what are actually imposed by society as it was. Which is why I've travelled the world to look at Morris. I'm terribly interested in how Morris can actually work in the States at all. It's an incredible culture to actually fit the Morris. And I just, you know, it's just unbelievable that it's so popular. And so on. And that's why I say you know, I'm very interested in Morris and all its ramifications. Why I'm interested in uh, the history of people, as it affects my family, affects the community in which I live, and the general history all the way back, you know, and things of that sort. Because all of that has an influence on our attitudes. And we, the Morris, have to survive in a culture that has all these attitudes. Well, I think, I think it you goes, can't go in and tell society it's wrong, can you? But I think it goes back to, to, to those that hear the music, some dance and some don't, simple as that. I mean, you hear the music, and some, some just dance, yeah. and some don't. Yeah. It's just back to that, that well, basic thing. Let me give an example. What's wrong with the Anglican Church? Not that they don't, it's a question of women bishops or not eventually. Oh, too many people are advertising if, <laughs> if you talk, there's a role for you in our culture. You know, you can actually preach, you know, lecture and things like that. Think very respectful, right? Yeah. If you can make music, singing or playing, yeah. there's a place for you in our culture. Yeah. Right? If you're one of these weirdos who dance. move, yeah. dance, there is no place. You're a nice dancer. You try and get the, the dance into a service. Mm. Carol, Marguerite Stave team, yeah. we were invited to dance the church fete. When we turned up over at Silchester, they looked at us and said, would we mind dancing the road outside? Mm. Yeah. Wouldn't let it dance in the churchyard. That's Some their, obscure attitude. That was their problem, wasn't it? it wasn't I don't know. It, it's a church attitude, you know. I, it, Christians are my children. I wanted the Morris to be danced. I got eight. Of, eight. We got danced once inside the church. You know, 
If you dance, liturgical dance is not respectable. But isn't that partly because of this myth of the pagan origin? Um, what pagan origin? Well, I know no, that the myth of no, the pagan it's origin it's it's actually it's causes it's all sorts of problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. Christianity is a pagan origin. Yes, but but vicars sort of say, oh, wait a minute, isn't this about fertility rights? I can't have that in my church. It's down to history, the Reformation. Um, yeah. You know, not the Reformation, but the, sure the, civil, the Civil War, all, all liturgical dance was thrown out. Yeah, I mean, and actually, it's not... never creeped There out. is a church, fe there is a church <laughs> it, festival it, it goes back to for history. fertility. It's called Rogation Time. Yes. Well, you go in a bloody parish, you know, <laughs> and anoint whatever it is, <laughs> all the cornerstones and things oh, like this. Not humans, not humans. Yeah. And I know the thing is, in the year 400 AD, the bishop said, well, I can't have all this fertility business, I'm going to rationalise it and Christianise it. And he did. And we have a vacation time. Roy, Roy, can you explain exactly what the vacation time is to the heathens and pagans in your audience? Well, as the pagan would consider it beating the bounds. Going around the fields, right? And blessing the fields. And, it happens and beating the hell out of choir boys, which is another <laughs> sexual event. <perversion. laughs> <laughs> 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 yes, nothing to do with. That's a part of it. What, what time of year does it happen? It used to happen at Mardi Gras, you know, Ash, uh, Ash Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, Tuesday time, like that. But it's gradually slipped to July. <laughs> <laughs> Give us back. I think it's partly, I mean, the Mendoza was ruled out probably because it's sort of quite calm on the way, isn't it? Oh, the great thing I find about traditional, what so called traditional customs, the way overnight they can slip it's months or appear <laughs> out of nowhere and things like this. You know. um, <coughs> It doesn't really matter about what happens at a place, because only matter the people there. That, that's your immediate history that does that. Yeah. Do you not think that the change, the, the move away from dance, the move away from ritual, is due to the fact that in medieval times, the vast majority of the population was illiterate? And if you wanted to make a political statement, you had a large ceremony. You crowned the king in front of a huge audience so that everybody knew the king had been crowned. Nowadays, if you wish to perform some instrument of government, you do it in writing. Then you announce it on TV, but you have to do it in writing. We've moved from, um, we've moved from a, a public spectacle form of social organisation because that was the only form of communication mass communication, to a, a written form of communication and its corresponding verbal equivalent, we now greatly value the ability to stand and speak and to write and to read. That's completely replaced um, dance, spectacle, coronation. Coronation is a quaint old thing that we have and we put it on the telly for the millions to watch. We've moved from the medieval thing, the Catholics haven't quite caught up with it, they're trying desperately to do so to uh, a written society, which is rapidly being replaced by an electronic society. Mm. Our records, our communication, is all done in an entirely different way. The Morris, the dance, is a visual thing. It's part of the medieval ritual, which, for people who didn't learn to read and write, mm. continued well into the 19th century. The problem with it, when you actually do it, you sometimes think that the audience actually wants to fast forward you. Do we get that sense? Or oh, they perhaps like to rewind what you've just done. <laughs> <laughs> to the interesting bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 nice one. Level of interest varying. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but they, 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 they do. They look at you. Uh, they're not actually in contact with you. So no. To reinforce what you say. Because they don't actually feel part of it. They, they, they look at you like you're something on TV. Yeah. And therefore something yeah. they have to Yeah, but that's not a fault of Morris. No, no, I'm not saying that. That's a part of the culture that we live in. No, I'm trying to say what you're saying. Do like, we then have to. They are in a time culture. Of course. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to say, you know, what, 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 what you're saying. It's, it's, it's a written culture. Yeah. That is the fault of Morris. We've overexposed the Morris. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in some respects, I suppose to you speak to a side that actually has to use the smallest possible print on its annual program. Yes. Most, I mean, it used to, I mean, pre television. How often did people see Morris signs? 
And how often does traditional science go out? I bet in the summer, if we set you out on an arbitrary evening, say, find me a Morris team, you won't. No. But even you, on a Saturday, I bet you won't Saturday, find one yeah. by driving around. Sunday, Conceptually, Sunday. because you say it on television and various other things, 10, 20 times a year. No. When I said, yeah. 40 yeah. years yeah. ago, yeah. you dress up and nobody yeah. knew yeah. what you were. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, people say, oh, a Morris dancer. Yeah. Yeah. That's not overexposure, because in the days when, like the Hungarian Revolution, they used to come up to us and say, what are you? And I'd explain what we were, and they said, your English is very good. <laughs> so I said, but I'm English. They said, what are you doing with a bunch of foreigners? <laughs> they said, but I did not explain that to you. <laughs> and so I said, they wouldn't believe that you're English in the 50s. Yeah. And so on, you know, they had no idea what Morris does. He had gone from a project. Yes. yes the right. typical traditional Morris team so is dead. Yes. 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 You know, this is why you mustn't look at Abingdon or Bampton as typical cops for Morris. They're still there. There's something wrong with them. Because <laughs> <laughs> the real Morris side is dead. Right. You're, yeah. saying, you're saying all that Morris like sides. Yeah. 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 They are something which is left over from no, a previous year. Well, yes. Our attitude towards them is, you know, we, take, we look at, you know, we sort of say about these teams with unbroken histories. But the vast majority of sides in the 1980s, 1980s, as Keith Chandler shows, had short histories. Yes. When the leaders died, they formed another side somewhere else. Do you know, like the you know, and that's the way it is today. Yeah. Yeah. Noble yeah. families, yeah. they are yeah. considerably yeah. Father. shorter than the Father's Noble families last on average three generations before they die out. Because it's you know, so difficult to produce sons. You know, they keep in breeding anyway. So bit no, no, no. Yeah. It's very simple. You take the typical statistics of what it is. If you have a normal sized family of two or three children, as it were, hey, you'll find on average a family would die after three generations. Yeah, a family name. Yeah. Which is why in closed societies you find there are very few family names. Yeah, because most of the, the original names died out. Well, I mean, with six of us, we have yet to produce what one would consider a legitimate cuneo hair. Oh. The, way things, the way things are going, we ain't going to. Is there anything you're trying to do? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> just, <laughs> I come from <laughs> Oxford. <laughs> apart from Roy, what's considered a large family? Trans six of us. What is all from cuneo hair? Roy? Apart from cuneo hair? There are, there are third generation domits, fourth generation yeah. domits around. At the moment, there are no third generation cuneos. Well, despite the fact that you're most of most of my grandchildren, my <laughs> grandchildren are called Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, baby, yourself. <laughs> Why are you not? <laughs> now, we're talking about statistics here, not about uh, anything really affects the Morris. Your comment about overexposure is very interesting. When Arthur asked you first to get up, he came off. He was absolutely mortified and said to someone standing near him, that's 40 years of material gone from one and a half years. Mm. He had done that act around the horse for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. And thereafter, every time he did a horse, yes, that's right. new material. Mm. Yes. Um, cool. Hence the demise of TV, basically. Mm. Why have you license? Yeah. That's one of the lovely things about yeah, something yeah. like Max Miller. Mm. You know, his stage show hardly changed over decades. You know, um, didn't uh, Morris yeah. dance either? Mind. Is anybody is anybody actually researching the influence of the? Uh, you've mentioned that Roy uh, Judge perhaps <coughs> is doing the influence of the music hall on the Morris because there's a sort of uh, well, there's some direct cross fertilisation, and then there's a lot of people who are influenced by the music hall generally. A lot of us, I suspect. Roy Judge is putting, you know, he's finishing his paper on what. Course, theatrical Morris. Mm -hmm. The Cuneos did not breathe. The Morris that appeared, <laughs> appeared in the theatre in the 19th and oh, 20th Cuneos. century, you know, which had nothing to do with the traditional Morris as we know it. But it had a great deal to do with Dan Leno and people of that ilk. Well, George Formby Sr. was a club. Yeah. He, he made his name initially as a championship in Lancashire by appearing all around the stage. Right. And his, his son came in as a well, yeah. But there was a, a strong interest there in. It, it was right. all based on.
traditional clock, the style of um, musical clock. Mm. Well, you know, I mean, people do make their, their name by winning things like Torval and Dean. Yeah. Mm. You know, um, and really, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, well, but they chose the rules, it's not fair. Yeah, that's not the point. You know, I mean, has anybody actually contemplated to try to persuade the world to have Morris dancing on ice? <laughs> or even Morris dancing the Olympics again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so man speaks a man from Horridge, you know. <laughs> no, so, no, so speaks a man who's been to more than one of your workshops. <laughs> oh, that's right, yes. yes. What, what, which Olympics are you talking about? Is it about Dover's games mm. or these modern things? That, uh, there there was a story at one stage that the Horridge Prize Medal was actually an Olympic medal. Because in 1900, it was proposed in the 1900 Olympics that in fact there would be cultural elements, including folk dance, poetry, essays, and speeches, and so on. And some of these classes actually were snub. And there was a sounding egg of groups around England of would they be interested in performing on behalf of England. Horace said, said yes. It was at Paris. <laughs> the only person I've ever heard that the story from is you, right? <laughs> because yeah, but you see, I'm the only person probably who actually remember bothered. That. Yeah. No, don't remember it. No, oh, it. <laughs> the early history of the Olympic movement is well documented. Mm. You know, and the connection with the much Wenlock Olympic Games, you know, as a spur, and that its comp connection with Dover's Games is documented. And the modern Olympics grew out on interest in the uh, much Wenlock Games, which actually had this element of culture in it. And the Baron tried very hard to have this cultural side into it. Well, they did have s snow sculptures at the Winter Olympics. Excellent, they were too. Yeah. They interviewed the competitors and they said to one Australian, What do you think of your draw? They gave him this huge block of snow and he said, I've got a very, very good draw here. What makes it good? He said, It's next to the cafe. <laughs> I thought it was a very <laughs> sound. <laughs> Well, perhaps, you know, you know, thinking about the, the, the Olympics and so on, you know, perhaps the way the Sidmouth competition should go is that we should have marks for technical merit and artistic merit. We have. We it doesn't sort of come out like that. that. The, you don't yeah. have, we no, that you you don't have a row of signs. No, no, you don't stand there and hold them up. That's what I want. That's what I want to see. I want, I want the judges to actually... I reckon you ought to have a clap on it. <laughs> They're handicapped before they start. Yeah. Oh. Well, we're looking forward to learning Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you're going to learn the Bruce Forsyth version of it. Oh, oh great. Oh, yeah. I have got the best I couldn't afford all those bandages. The <laughs> Bruce Forsyth, <laughs> along with the Fez Heads, must have actually got an original video of Wilson, Keppel and Betty. Yes, you're right. Actually. Because yeah. there is a standard way of doing the sand dance, dance, which they all do, yeah. because I have television extracts of a number of groups that actually you know, copied them for um, things like Royal Command performances and things like this. You know. And the bits of the original I've seen are all, in, all the same thing. You know, and I assume the Fezheads have access to the same video mm -hmm. because they actually produce the same film movements. The reason I, I'm going to use the um, Bruce Forsyth show <laughs> is that it's a significantly simplified version, which means it's doable. And if you don't like it, uh, you think it's too difficult, you can then see the two teams that tried to do it afterwards. You see what's acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> But it's now a part of English folk culture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody in the country knows what the sand dance is. Mm -hmm. You talk to people who are not in the Morris when they know what you're talking about. And yet there was only them. You know, well, it, but people will dress up and do it, you know, um, in that sort of way. On the stage, everybody recognises what it is and what they're doing, yeah. even if they can't remember it's Wilson, Wilson Keppel and Betty. You know. But it's not, it does not depend on age. Yes. I mean, I'm actually too young to remember. You're too young. Yeah. Well, you remember all these like that. I actually saw them live a couple of times. Who is that with me? 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 Who
Yeah, they're trying to sell baskets, weren't they? They were in my baskets. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
happen to get happen the, the same, then they'll well, always happen the same. No, what really horror is she saying? <laughs> Because if you make an experiment, <coughs> no. you measure the results, and you make an experiment, no. science an experiment, isn't you measure the results, and they, ha they, no. they happen you twice or three times. Science, three science times. is about observing things, even if you have to interact with it to observe it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It doesn't, doesn't require the thing to be um, same result thought. every it's time you do the experiment. You cannot what would particularly dance without, without affecting its content? <laughs> exactly! <laughs> so we have so many principles! Yes. Yes. Right. I always knew my degree would come in so much. You can the videos! <laughs> 20 years ago we used to call that recursive programming. <laughs> <laughs> it's always about the same people smiling at the camera, the same people not looking at it. It's true. Yes. No, 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 because there were some wonderful correlations that came out between the issuing of television licenses after the Second World War and after the television was invented mm -hmm. became popular, and the instance of lung cancer. And some people oh, said, ah, you watch television and you get lung cancer as a consequence. Because they've taken these two sets of observations and lived together, and they well, they haven't proved the cause and effect. Very, very this correlation very, doesn't prove Very high it. correlation yeah. coefficient. And There's actually... Thought, there it is, it's proved. But they haven't actually established a causal linkage. No, because smokers have watched telly. Yeah, yeah. 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 smoked all night. Well. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a strong uh, statistical correlation yeah. between the number of Baptist missionaries going abroad and teenage pregnancies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's a very so. strong correlation between the strength of the Earth's magnetic field, which is strongest at the north and south yeah. poles, and the density of population of humans. So if you have a magnet in your pocket, you are absolutely safe. Is that a male or a female? Yeah, but <laughs> you can't tell that from the evidence. It's like people who wear a copper ring just in case. It might actually do you some good, so what harm does it do? And it's a lot more fun that way. It's a lot more fun that way, yes. It depends where you wear your colour <laughs> in. <laughs> it goes co correlation. <laughs> well, it's just the colour run. Basically, we're running around the correlation doesn't prove anything. <laughs> but the scientific method isn't actually that correlation. No, no it's, it's no, limited as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, the problem with scientific messages is if it's is some. It's, fundamental assumption they've actually framed the way to do it. Mm. No. And it's not true. I mean science is all finding that there are things it doesn't understand. And it has to actually improve its methodology and its way of thinking about things. Most scientists aren't terribly interested in that. Yeah. Unless unless you have a predictive value, then you're not considered a very well, scientist of mere mere technician. The, 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 there's a problem no, because the, the public can't understand that if you say as a scientist, well I might know more about this subject than everyone else in the whole world, but I don't really understand it. And I think, oh, you're incompetent, you know, you're useless. You say, there you are, so you don't understand it, and that's all they pick up from you. Right. And just you just find out this bloke doesn't look at any about the subject. That's just and bad PR, isn't it? Well, no, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 you, you, you can't say you understand everything about the subject, so that's that's you that's your view of the whole of the universe. Who's come out with that view? That's all why this discussion session. Because if it isn't, it's How many scientists do you think? How many people would loosely describe themselves as scientists? Have we got here? Scientists or engineers? Scientists, engineers, mathematicians. Scientist, engineer, mathematician. Are you not an artist? Are you a scientist? No, no, no. Scientist, scientist, engineer, mathematician. Scientist. I have, have to have. Roy, put your hand up. Roy, put your hand up. You're a scientist. So what am I putting my hand up for? Are you a scientist? Survey. Are you a scientist? No. Scientist, mathematician, engineer, someone of that general group. I am an engineer. I am not a scientist. I'm a scientist. 
Yeah. Right. We just trying to work out what sort of vague correlation oh, no. are. Oh, but this could prove and that scientists say it's science. Just not prove it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 I would just find the very scientists say it's science. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
propose to do is I don't really care what we, tradition you do, is each six will have to decide what it's going to do. I would prefer you settle for Bledington or Field 10 or something like that. But if, if you're a standard hard or weekly side, I don't really care. Except if you're weekly, you have problems with half pages and something. Practice that. 
slowing down gravity, so when you throw, it goes normal speed. All right? Think about it.
swing to the start up. Day and throw. Day and throw. Throw. Day and throw. Day and throw it to their right hand, please.
position, you have to have a clue to start with. <laughs>
song. Song tune. Yeah. Can you actually do the chorus again and I'll find it?
Go for one. Do you feel left out?
squeeze the pan.
you actually have to go the hard way. You much more fun. Can we have a once just up and practice? You can do it, Jesse. I know.
two, one at each end, that is. Turn 180 degrees towards the neighbour, towards the neighbour, to face the other way. And you now realise there are three of you facing one way and three of you facing the other. So when you back out, you back out into a proper set, having moved round the set one place. In right shoulders again. Turn on the ends and back out. In one spot. Turn on the ends and back out. Then half.
play it with you because I play it in G mode. I shall stop if you start playing it. Well, it might change your habit of liking <laughs>
we more women in the workshop who just were not musicians or any who can read music. I mean, more than one. We have an excellent one at the moment who's having trouble. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, your deck could actually try and create a dance and fit the tune, which is another good question. So, Wellington, it's based on the idea, based on the idea that the normal figure stepping is one, two, three, hop, one, two, three, hop, galley, step, and jump. Right? Can we have a little bit of music when everybody just tries the normal thing and I want you to do the maximum confusion? One, two, three.
problems come with the chorus. Now, everybody, sidestep, close sidestep. Yada, short one. Yum dum dee da gali. Sidestep the other way. Yum dum dee and step and jump. The galley's been moved up a bit, you see, right? Let's work it again. One, two, three, four, gali. And one, two, three, four, step and jump.
absolutely no trouble with ex you know, fudging and switching. So I'm not going to adjudicate on that. Right, now face up, hold down. So here we go. London Pride.
filthy. Oh, right. <laughs> you haven't got to that. Did you ever see stags doing that? Ooh. 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 Three double steps. Yeah. Three double steps. Are you doing the second Pass right shoulders, pass left in the middle, 